There is a promising new ba breakthrough in the race for the coronavirus vaccine, which is, I think, uh, some sunlight even for our souls. Preliminary results show Moderna's coronavirus vaccine is 94.5% effective in its third phase of trials. The company is working in collaboration with the National Institutes of Health. Last week, Pfizer announced progress on its own vaccine candidate. It is shown to be more than 90% effective. The government says both vaccines will be free. Now, this news comes at a critical time with more than 11 million COVID-19 cases reported across the U.S. Over a million of those cases were reported in the last seven days and hospitals nationwide are increasingly overwhelmed as the panic as the pandemic rather worsens day by day. Carter Evans has the latest. COVID cases are pushing Utah's hospitals to the brink, and things are almost certainly going to get worse, according to Dr. Brandon Webb. It's almost like watching a, a slow-motion train wreck. You know what's coming, and it looks horrible. That's the problem with the mathematics of this, is that we do know what's coming. We're seeing so many cases day over day that unless definitive steps are taken to interrupt the transmission cycle, exceeding capacity is a mathematical inevitability. Many frontline workers are already stretched thin by work that's physically exhausting and emotionally draining, like nurse Katrina Emery. You know, families are always looking for hope, but sometimes there's just not a lot of hope to give them. Grim scenes continue to unfold in El Paso, Texas, where county inmates were loading bodies into mobile morgue trucks over the weekend. The county judge there says using inmate labor indicates the city's level of staff shortages. More than 200 people have died in that city from COVID in the last month. With cases and hospitalization smashing records, at least 27 states have imposed new coronavirus restrictions on businesses and gatherings in the last two weeks. On Sunday in Michigan, which saw at least 496 deaths from COVID last week, the governor announced a three-week freeze on indoor dining and in-person learning for high school and college students. If we don't take aggressive action right now, we could soon see one thousand deaths per week here in Michigan. But without more targeted restrictions, hospital systems nationwide could be just weeks away from their breaking point, according to infectious disease expert Michael Very Osterholm. Well. You know, my worst fear is what we saw happen in, in other countries where people were dying on the streets. People literally were dying in the waiting room of emergency rooms after spending 10 hours just waiting to be seen. That's going to start happening, and we will see the breadth and the depth of this tragedy. So for more on this, we want to bring in Dr. Ron Alfenbein. He's an emergency care physician and author of Surviving Coronavirus, an ER Doc's Perspective. All right, doctor, we're going to start with this news coming from Moderna about the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, it, apparently, the trials have been quite successful. What do we know about the trial and what happens next? So good morning to both of you and to all the viewers. Uh, so you, you know, we talked last week about the Pfizer uh, vaccine that's you know supposedly 90% efficacious. The Moderna vaccine, which is also uh, a brand new technology, just like Pfizer, it's called an mRNA vaccine. Uh, it's never really been pr produced before and certainly never been commercially available using this type of technology. So it's, it's really groundbreaking. Um, so. The Moderna, the Moderna vaccine supposedly is is 95% efficacious. Uh, again, this is all preliminary data. Both vaccines are using preliminary data has not been peer reviewed. So it's just the companies putting this data out there saying that's what it is. So we don't really know for sure if that's the case. Um, and then they will apply, both of these companies will apply for what's called an emergency use authorization, which basically is the FDA stamp of approval during a pandemic like this. Normally they would give FDA approval for something, which takes years to get, but because of the necessity of getting this out to market as fast as possible, the FDA can't do that. So they use what's called an emergency use authorization. And in order to apply for that EUA or the emergency use authorization, they have to have it. at least half of the participants have gotten the second dose of the vaccine and it has to have been two months since that time. So the first time that Pfizer will reach that threshold will be the end of this month, uh, next week, I believe, actually, uh, right after Thanksgiving and they will immediately apply for the EUA at that point. And then it will take the government a couple of weeks to decide on, you know, wait, look at the data and make sure it's safe. And, um, and then will they, they, whether they will grant the EUA or not is up to them. Uh, Moderna is a couple of weeks behind, and that's because the uh, Pfizer vaccine was 
two doses of vaccine 21 days apart, and the Moderna vaccine was two doses 28 days apart. So uh, there's a little bit of a lag there with Moderna, um, but uh, they both should be getting their, hopefully getting their EUAs relatively soon. Uh, and doctor, just remind our viewers again how, I mean, 94%, that's the uh, Moderna vaccine, uh, the Pfizer vaccine, potentially more than 90% effective. Just remind our viewers uh, how effective the standard flu vaccines are. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, so the standard flu vaccine is about 40 to 60% efficacious, depending on the uh, on the year that you're looking at. So, you know, this is like, like, beyond a home run. I mean, this is a grand slam. Plus, the mRNA technology allows the vaccine to be mass produced very quickly, very inexpensively, uh, and you don't have to use chicken eggs, which is a major source of uh, um, uh, uh, allergies to, for people who you know can't get the flu shots because they're allergic to chicken eggs. So uh, this can be produced in the laboratory very quickly, very cheaply. Uh, and, and I want to put this into perspective for people, too. Just how amazing this is. I mean, I, I would put it akin to putting a man on the moon and bringing them back safely in terms of scientific achievement. It normally takes 10 years to develop a vaccine. The, the, the fastest one ever produced before to market was mumps, and that was in the 60s, and that took over four years. This will be done inside of a year. We'll have two vaccines, hopefully, available for this new virus. It's, it's tremendous. It's amazing. Uh, it's just to put that into perspective, it's really groundbreaking. And the other kind of really interesting difference between Moderna's and Pfizer's uh, vaccine is that Moderna's can be transported in just a regular freezer, not sort of an extra cold freezer, which is what Pfizer's uh, vaccine needs, because as I understand it, it doesn't have any preservatives in it, so it has to stay very, very cold, which would mean additional equipment, and I presume it would be a lot harder to distribute. But can you kind of talk a little bit about that key difference? Absolutely. So the Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at minus 137 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty darn cold. And most people don't have freezers that can accommodate that. Most, and I don't mean most people like most, you know, citizens. I mean, most hospitals, most uh, uh, pharmacies, most urgent cares, most doctor's offices, really nobody has a freezer that can accommodate that. So Pfizer actually built this really amazing little suitcase device that can, can carry up to 975 um, doses of this, but it can only be open twice a day, and it can only be open for one minute at a time. And it only lasts for 10 days, and it has to be uh, carried over the, um, the ground. It can't be shipped through the air, and it can't be uh, on a ship. So your, your distribution channels are incredibly taxed um, using this, this technology because of the necessity to, to be kept so cold. And it has to be, it has to be kept with dry ice. Uh, which cannot be shipped in the air, apparently, uh, because it's dangerous to ship um, <clears throat> in an airplane. So the, 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 the suitcase has been developed by Pfizer specifically for this purpose, but it's still very difficult to, to get around. It's still very difficult in, in terms of accessing it. Again, you can only open it twice a day, each for one minute. You have to take out what you think you're going to use uh, for the day and then not overshoot because the, the vaccine will go bad. And you, you can't open it again after that. So you really have to be careful um, knowing who's going to show up to, to get the vaccine. So there are all kinds of technical problems with the Pfizer vaccine that makes it very difficult. And as you said, Anne-Marie, the Moderna vaccine is much easier because it can be kept at standard uh, frozen temperature or, or refrigerated temperatures, excuse me, that most people would have access to. Certainly most doctor's offices would. So it's, it's from a distribution standpoint, the Moderna vaccine seems to be a lot easier uh, to get around and, and to dis, uh, distribute to the general public. Well, fingers crossed. I think at this point we'll take uh, any kind of good news and uh, two vaccines that look like they could be successful is two times the good news. Uh, Dr. Ron Elfenbein, thank you so much. Thank you.